In the beginning, there were only regular fights. Simple and mundane tiffs between humans and other things. But as the things learned to fight back, something new was created. The Boss Fight The boss fight increased in difficulty, all the way to nightmare mode. Soon, there was no hope for the mere mortal human. But then, the greatest sage and greatest battle masters started to share their wisdom with others. You're now about to listen to that wisdom. The great wisdom of Austin and Aubrey. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Boss Fight with Austin and Aubrey. I am Austin, and wow, I am full. I am Aubrey, and I feel like I'm about to explode from the middle of my body in an outwards direction that would be very, very gross for anybody who saw it. I know how last time he said that in order to defeat Thanksgiving food, you can't just eat it. That was a lie. That's all bullshit. We didn't you... think it was bullshit, but turns out it was all bullshit yeah you should just eat it just eat it because like it still is food and now i have nutrients inside me but maybe a a few too many yeah so so much that we might die because we were swallowed by a monster if you don't remember that uh we were swallowed by a, a giant thanksgiving food monster that just ate us whole after we pledged our loyalty to it because we were um a little bit scared And Mm -hmm. then we ate it from the inside out. Yeah. Just like the hit Pixar movie, Inside Out, where the child's emotion eats it from the inside out. Right, yeah, bold new direction for Pixar. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We are here to talk about the biggest boss fights in your life, because that's what this show is is it's not a pixar review show that's a different podcast coming to you next year but for now you're stuck with this one yeah you have no choice we put some glue on your earbuds and now they're in there and we turned off the pause button it's gone look down at Gotta your phone love right now pranks <laughs> got him it's that's my it's been a long con of april fool's jokes and we finally got you with it you've been ashton kutcher You have. He's your new wallpaper now. Okay. So, anyways, Boss Fight with Austin and Aubrey is an advice show where we, the greatest sage and greatest battle master of all time, give you the tips, tricks, and strategies you need to defeat the biggest boss fights in your life. And I think that we are done with the intro part, the goofy goofy intro part, and we can get to the super duper serious questions that we're good at answering. Yes, it's very very real questions that are super serious and just the fate of the world rests on our shoulders. So let's get to it. All right, so first question. Dear Austin and Aubrey, I recently went to the aquarium and some of those deep sea fish look like actual monsters. I feel as though I should prepare myself in case a real Sharknado or similar deep sea disaster should arise. What should I do? And that is from Seriously. They are so freaky in Fremont. Is it pronounced Fremont? It F-R-E-M-O-N-T? Is, is that where? Yes. Is that somewhere where you live? Yes. Okay, because that's definitely not where I live. Yes. Uh, so, deep sea monsters are... The things of nightmares. Yeah, they're so freaky. They're... Have you seen those... You know, the fish in, like, Nemo that's got the little thing coming out its forehead with the little light, and it's all Chompy McChomperson. That has to be fish. A, yeah, an anglerfish. That has to be a dentist's worst nightmare. Orthodontist. It has to be an orthodontist's worst nightmare. I mean, maybe dentist, too. I wouldn't want to get in there and clean that. I, that's very true. It would chomp me up. Deep sea monsters are coming to get us through a freak natural disaster. How do we prepare? Well, we know we know Sharknado for sure. We understand Sharknado. Right. We, we have we have the sort of reference guide for that one. Yeah, of course. I'm curious about other ones. What about 
a squidicane. A giant squidicane. Or a leopard seal nami. You know, I was trying to come up with one for tsunami. That was pretty good. What about an eel quake? An eel quake. Which one do you want to hit first? I feel like it, it. we could come up with good names for all these sea creatures in a natural disaster all day. But we can't sit down and write the manual for every individual creature. That's like we have to we have to just come up with some blanket all deep sea creatures are coming to get us. What steps can we take? Well, the first thing's first. You got to stop global warming. And that's because as the earth warms, it ice caps melt more water, all of a sudden it's got more territory. Some more turf. Some more yeah, surf. not only that, those fish are pissed. Yeah, they're not very happy about it. Messing we, with their ecosystem. Yeah, we like, keep stop the plastic it. in them. Yeah. We bleach their reefs. Man, so, we are so, like, you know what? Now I feel bad, so bad for the fish. I'm just going to let them take over our territory. I think well, I'm going to sit this one I out. I mean, now, I, I'm okay I'm okay with cohabitating with some fish, right? I'll, I'll make that adjustment. But I don't feel like I can do angler fish. I think... I think that's where I draw the line. What if... Can you trick these fish into making them believe that you are one of them? Can you do that? Can you put a big glass case around your house and you're like, this is my tank. It's filled with air. And you do that and you have lots of trees so that the oxygen recycles and you attach a flashlight to your forehead and just wear really flowy shirts that make them look like you got fins. You tried that. That might work. Yeah, fish are pretty dumb. And so... what do you have to? What What do you? Hello, my fellow fish friends. I am just in my tank, just chilling. Please do not touch the glass. We all hate it when you tap when you tap on the glass. Yeah, we. But then, okay, I feel like this might backfire, because if you put yourself in a tank, right, the fish uprising is going to see that and say, oh no, we our must brethren, free him. Yeah, our brethren is trapped, we must, we must allow him freedom, he must be freed, we must take action, and then Sharknado is going to go straight through your living room in order to get to you. Mm, God, I forgot about the fish revolution. Silly me. If fish have a platform to, to start an uprising, they're going to do it, right? Because there's so many of them. Like, all it takes point. is one fish to get smart enough to say, hey, there's like a bunch of us. We can take them. I don't know. You know, I've watched a great documentary about undersea culture, and... There's a squirrel out there that lives in a dome, and nobody breaks her dome up. She just lives there in her little in her little suit and goes around and hangs out in Bikini Bottom with the rest of her friends and the SpongeBob. Yeah, that's a good point. But but that's like, but Sandy is a squirrel, so she's not human, she's not human. and not responsible for the global warming, right? She's she's integrated in society. That, yeah, because I, I feel like this situation is more of a wait it out and survive as opposed to take immediate action and slay the menace, right? This is this is not a this is not a punches and poison situation because that's you're going to have way too much of that you need to to distribute. Mhm. Too many fish. So you're going to have to survive the waves of fish. Get it? Get it? Like it's like it's a tower defense game and they're waves, but they're actually in the water, so it's I'm waves. I'm currently thinking of ways to murder you. But here, here's, here's my thing. So, so Pokemon Let's Go has, has come out, which has re, reintroduced into the equation you know, type weaknesses, right? So all all those fish are, are water type, right? 
So we just need to get a bunch of types that are super effective against water, right? Like the electricity. Now that's not going to work on eels, right? So that so we got it. So, so electricity is going to get a bunch of them, right? But I feel like jellyfish probably live through that because jellyfish are just fucking bonkers, and electric eels are going to live through that. So we gotta come up. We gotta come up with something. But for everyone else, I feel like you could just get a big old toaster and drop it in the ocean. I was just thinking oversized toaster. Yeah, oversized One toaster. Big toaster. Maybe a few different oversized toasters for each like ocean. Just just to make sure we've got an even distribution of. Now now actually I, I'm curious. What would happen if you dropped a toaster into the ocean? Well, I think the electricity would only go so far. Yeah, but like how far? Well, I only know that one hair dryer equals one bathtub. Right. Right? That's what the movies and the TV shows have taught me is one hair dryer equals one bathtub. A hair dryer is less than a toaster, right? Right. Hair so I have to imagine toaster. I have to imagine toaster could do like hot tub? Oh, hot tub is good. Hot yeah, tub. hot tub. We'll hot do hot tub. tub. Okay, so toaster toaster is hot tub, which right. would mean that something bigger than that would equal Hold on, a swimming let me, pool. Let me just do a quick Google. How no, many you're not. Don't hot don't do that. In the ocean, <laughs> uh, nobody seems to have asked this question before, so I don't think we have an exact number on how many toasters good. we're gonna need. Now we know what's something. What is electrical device bigger than toaster? Not TV. I'm not gonna waste a TV on the ocean, but I will. I will waste a toaster. What about a Wii U? That's a pretty garbage console. All right. So one Wii U, it's got more firepower uh, than than toaster does, but right. it's still worth throwing away. So let's say one Wii U equals one swimming pool. I do, I do just want to say like a Wii U might be a good last bastion of defense if you've got a pool at your house. So you just want to keep one of those on hand in case fish start encroaching on your territory right because that, that would be a good thing to have everybody knows that every pipe leads to the ocean which means if fish gets right. strong enough it just swims up pipe into swimming pool you gotta make sure every body of water is is accounted for my question is if you drop guitar amp into the ocean and just turn it up to 11 and play real big loud chord what happens if you if you can you rock the them to death and i understand rock types are not effective against water types but what i'm saying is this is sound if you put sound waves into ocean big heavy metal riffs and other cool things like that what happens to fish this is this is tough so we've got we've got a battle of the bands kind of situation yeah, going on here's I'm I'm thinking that either A, they start rocking out real hard, and they enjoy the music, and they're distracted. And all you have to do is have one person play that guitar at all times, and you just switch out people. You just, okay, you yeah, just... so so we're, we're, we're more of a more of a misdirect and distract kind of strategy. Right, and then second thing is that they they get shooken up because uh you know vibrations through the air vibrations through the water they're different and it's it can actually like m move water if you do enough of it and so maybe it just like rocks them up and shakes them up real bad they get real confused maybe they get concussions and they forget about the whole thing okay so i i like i like this idea we're gonna have to recruit some really good guitarists right oh it doesn't have to be well it depends on which route you're going do you want do you want them distracted get good ones do you want them dead get real real bad ones well so but i feel like there's a fine line because I, if i was a fish and i heard wonderwall i would i would immediately evolve feet and walk on land and punch that guy in the face right Maybe maybe it's not so much that you need a really bad guitarist. You do need a really skilled one. It's just a matter of what they're playing, right? Yeah. So you can you can you can get you can give them like a little sick riff, and and they'll and they'll 
they'll air guitar it out. Sorry, they'll water guitar it out. What what would be Fish's favorite band? Because you don't you don't want them. Cause, so if you pick music too intense, right? Then fish get angrier and they attack people because of the music. They're inspired by the music and they attack. If it's too light and hokey, it fades into the background and then they just start focusing on the murdering of all humans again. Mm-hmm. I feel I feel like fish are probably into heart because they have that song Barracuda. That's pretty good. You need to have an anthem for them. Let's find something in the middle. So, how do we want Fish to act? You know, I, f- I feel like if we can redirect their anger, or or just... Ooh! Get... It's, it's all pop punk, and you redirect their anger from the humans to their parents, and uh, their fish yeah. societies, and their hometowns. And then, all of a sudden... They may have goofy haircuts and dress in black scales all the time, but then they're not worried about you. They're eating pizzas with their best friends, and they've got stickers on their MacBooks, and they're wearing their khaki shorts, and they're just saying things like, you just wouldn't understand, and one day I'm going to get out of this town. I'm going to get out of this lake. Get out of this gulf. And I'm going to go into the Pacific Ocean. I'm going to take my submarine with all my friends and do band stuff. Yeah, suck it, mom. Mom, fish mom. And dad, my fish mom. Oh my god, we have to leave and take the current right now. Because if we don't get to the Pacific for the, to- for the concert, I'm going to lose it. These fins were made to rock, mother... This, this is this is good. This is good. Uh, so we've got to we've got to we've got to invite panic at the fish go. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Ocean City soundtrack. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, All time flow. Hey, nice. Uh, yellow carp. Oh, yeah. a, a cray to remember. 30 seconds to Mars, the honest trench. <laughs> oh, death crab for cutie. Ah, yes! <laughs> That's it. Okay, second question. Dear Austin and Aubrey, I was at a farmer's market the other day when one of the vendors started aggressively trying to sell me their stuff. This is not the first time that this has happened, and I mostly just freeze and stammer out an awkward, no thank you. What can I do in the future to ward off these salespeople? And that's from Farmer's Market Freezer in Frisco. Social anxiety is a big, a big boss fight in my life, and this is exactly how I would react if I were in this situation. What can I do in the future to ward off salespeople? We are not fighting social anxiety here. We are fighting sales. Okay. People. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Let's get in that mind. Don't get me wrong. It's a big boss fight, but this is not the question. The question is about the salespeople and okay. warding them off. You're right. Okay. So I feel like okay. Let's 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 talk loadout. Let's talk. Let's talk gear setup. You're gonna need your wooden stakes. You're gonna need your garlic. You're gonna Our... need mirrors. Our sales. Holy vampires? water. I don't know. But you can never be too sure. A gun with silver bullets in it. It doesn't matter who it is. If you're pointing at a gun at them, they are going to be the ones to stammer out an awkward no thank you this next time. Uh, that that's probably true. If, if we're talking if we're talking gear setup, you're going to need your headphones of ignoring, right? Very uh very common accessory you can you can loot from any local store. Your sunglasses of I'm not making eye contact with you. Just carry around a bunch of stinky cheese. Oh yeah. Actually can you can you eat just like garlic and onions? And and burp a lot. Yeah. You might be asked to leave the whole farmer's market though, so Yeah, because you do have to talk to a salesperson to get you that fresh peaches and fresh apples can you just 
perpetually hold up your middle finger as you walk. And you know what? You can you can cut off the other four, and then it always looks like you're flipping people off. And when they go, "Whoa, man!" and you'll be like, "Sorry, I just I just only have the one finger." And then they'll they'll act like the idiot. They'll be like, yeah. "Oh man, I'm so sorry." If a salesperson comes up to you and starts like trying to aggressively like sell you stuff, you need to sell them something back. Yeah, really turn it turn it on its head and make them be faced with what they're doing to you. Okay. Oh, you know what you need to do? You need to get some pamphlets. Now, so next time, next time the uh mormons or the jehovah's witnesses come around you keep some of their pamphlets and you they come up to you and you're like that's great i would love to uh i would love to do this for you if you have uh three hours to hear about uh your lord and savior jesus christ or make it a little more crazy because you never know it's a real like jesus christ is is a founder of an actual religion that is here on earth you need to take it farther take it from your boss fight friends us two say i of course i would love to buy something but only if you accept galactor prime into your heart and then uh tell them about your son worship of galactor prime have you heard of daddy jupe lately it's my favorite band oh actually that's a good one if if you don't if they try to sell you something, offer to trade for your mixtape. <laughs> I've got Wonderwall on it. I've got the the soundtrack to Pirates of the Plane on here. Yeah, because people do like bartering, but they hate unsolicited mixtapes. So that's really that's really gonna throw them off their game. I've got two hours of me screaming into a microphone about how I was never loved, and. I've got the Wiggles theme song. <laughs> They're all covers made by yours truly. Because best case scenario, they'll leave you alone forever, right? Worst case scenario, they actually complete the trade and you get a new listener. Maybe that is best case scenario. You get you get free peaches and somebody's going to listen to your music. You know what would really make people not want to trade with you? Telling them that you have all 13 episodes of Boss Fight with Austin and Aubrey on this tape. <laughs> and, that, and that they should listen to it. Yeah. Oh, hey, actually, can you just, like, bring a boombox with you and blast our podcast? <laughs> Thanks. We appreciate it. They'll either all run away or they'll just be like, wow, that's surprisingly okay. Yeah, and that'll, that'll pacify them. What do salespeople really like? Money. Charts. Money? No, can't do money. Money is what they actually want. What's yeah. something that they're attracted to that you can do that wouldn't get rid of your money? Promotions? Stock market prices? Fuck, I don't know anything about business. Uh, vulnerable elderly people? Can you they're can tricky. you get can you hire a grandma to come with you, and then when the salesperson comes over, like you just you. You you are the Mario and the grandma is the Yoshi in this situation and you jump off that train to safety and leave the Yoshi behind to take the fall. Oh my god. That's awful. <laughs> yeah, well I you know, you do what works. Now here's the deal. If you're gonna do that, you have to ride the grandma in there. You have to be on grandma's shoulders as you walk in. Otherwise it doesn't really work. That's I mean that's true. You're gonna have to find a pretty sturdy grandma. I'm sturdy grandma. It's very nice to meet you. I can bench press 300. <laughs> and I make a mean sugar cookie. I like to end my workout with a word as original. Here, I've been I've been making this quilt for you, see? It's a weighted blanket so you can get up out of bed and get a workout, you sick, weak pussy. I like to mix whey protein into my liver. Gaines Granny. Hello, I am Gaines Granny. That's a new series that I need. I I need now. If I if I had Gaines Granny motivating me to work out, I feel like I would be more consistent. Dear Austin and Aubrey, there's a strange man in my neighborhood who wears a full suit of armor everywhere he goes and talks in ye old English. 
I somehow insulted his honor, and now we're jousting at 3 p.m. at the flagpole. Any jousting tips? And that's from Jousting in Johnson County. Jousting, fun sport, right? Get on a horse, you poke somebody with a stick, they fall off, you win. That's that's a good time. But I feel I just feel like the stick is so. Hmm. Is is there's where in the jousting handbook does it say you have to use the lance? I think in the basic rule books. I think it says get on horse, use lance. Because I was thinking, like, could you just use a gun and just shoot him? Yeah. Or shoot the horse? No, no, I don't know. Don't you don't shoot, shoot the, the horse. horse. You shoot the guy, so he falls off the horse because he's dead. But he falls off, and you win. You know what you could do is you could get rid of his his knickers. You could go into his his old castle house, get rid of his his underpants, and then. When he wears his armor, he chafes real bad, and he doesn't want to show up at 3 p.m. That's he says, good. I'm sorry. Yeah. I gotta stay home for this one. Uh, alternately, you could just put, like, itching powder in his chainmail, and he puts that on. He's gonna be so distracted, he's not gonna he's not gonna be able to hold that lance. How do you put itching powder in some kind of message that tells you that if you don't, reply and send this to 10 people that you're gonna have bad luck yeah may- maybe you could just maybe you just like stuff stuff a letter and hand it to your local courier and have them deliver it and when they open it up it's like they get a blast of itching powder but also it's like send this to 10 of your other night friends or you will lose your squire in 30 days yeah that's that's good. So, so chain, chain, uh, chain mail. I've just realized that that's what you were. <laughs> I have just realized that's the joke you were making the whole time. Uh, that's where we. That's where we are today. <laughs> oh boy! All right. You should replace his saddle with one that is like three sizes too big. And so when he goes out to his horse, he thinks that his horse shrunk, and then it's not worth jousting anymore. What if he thinks he just got really big? No, because he gets on the horse, he gets in the saddle, saddle's still too big for him. Can you get two of your squires to take the place of the horse and like dress up in a horse costume? So that <laughs> when, you, when you ride them, they can, they can actually, you know throw their own punches as they as they walk by right so you you got like kind of a you got like a three-on-one advantage (laughs) can you imagine a knight that's just like i am sir frederick and this is my mighty steed hammer hoof and it's just two guys in a (laughs) in a horse costume they're just like nay (laughs) (laughs) Clop, clop, clop. Clop, 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 <laughs> clop, clop, clop. I, is that, is Onward, that... Onward, hammer hoof! Is that not already something in a Monty Python movie? It has to be, because doesn't that it? that sounds... I can't, because I, I don't know all of the ye old medieval jokes that they made. I only know of the Holy Grail, and I don't think that's in the Holy Grail. Because their whole I... spoof was the coconuts. Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, well, you could do that as well. And then you're sitting there in your Ferrari, and you're about to shoot him in the face, and he just looks silly. Yeah. So you. So it's not. Yeah. You actually. Could you just have your horse ride in the back seat of the uh, of the Ferrari? You need to win the token of the one he loves, or win the token of his mother. <laughs> oh. <Yeah>. oh, oh. <laughs> So you, so you, you get. I win this one for you, Sharon. Wait, what, Sharon? Mother. (laughs) You ride into battle. You're waving around her hanky. He's gonna be so thrown off his game, right? So thank you, everybody, for listening. Unfortunately, in your case. Uh, so sorry to have subjected you to this podcast. But if you do want more of it, where can you find it, Aubrey? 
you can find us on the Twitter sphere at Boss Fightcast. You can send us any of your questions. We need more questions to bossfightcast at gmail.com. We got a Facebook's page. You can find everything on positivethoughts.com. P O D S I T. Fuck. P O D S I T I V E thoughts.com. Or you can shout our name into the dark black void three times in a row while picking your left nostril with your right pinky and we will be there for you that's true now it's very important that it's exactly that way otherwise we're not gonna get the call so yeah we'll get bad reception at that point and we don't want that no onward ammo hoofs clock 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 clock